Hey everyone, I wanna welcome you to Gateway Christian Church at Home. In a few minutes, Pastor Randy's gonna share how you can discover a whole lot to smile about if you know where to look. So don't let life get you down. Stay joyful, stay hopeful, and stay positive. So take a moment, hit, hit the share button right now, and, and join us as we prepare our hearts through praising and worshiping God together. Storm. Storm. 
compassion, love that's never failing. Then mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of a Savior. God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the
Thanks so much for joining us this week for Church at Home. The message is going to begin shortly. Before we do, I want to encourage you to grab the link and share it with a friend. Here at Gateway Christian Church, we exist to love God, love others, and make disciples. If this is your first time joining us, first of all, welcome. We are so happy you're here. We would love for you to fill out our digital connection card at gatewaycc.org slash card, or click the link in our chat. We also have small groups meeting together online that we'd love for you to be a part of. You can join by also filling out that card. If you or someone you know needs prayer, let us know. We would love to be praying for you. You can do any of those by filling out that card again at gatewaycc.org slash card. Next, we have notes and devotions that go along with today's message. You can find them at gatewaycc.org slash notes. I also wanted to highlight on Sundays at 10 a.m., we have our kids service here on our Facebook page. So grab your kiddos, six and under, and get ready for some dances and story time. We are so excited to be able to bring you church at home. A great way to partner with us in ministry is by giving online. You can do so at gatewaycc.org slash give. So I just want to take a moment to pray about something that has been on my heart lately. Dear God, I pray for George Floyd and his family, asking that you hold them close and provide comfort. I pray for peace. I pray that more people will come to know you, Lord, and learn from you about kindness and compassion and to have more love in our hearts. I pray for all the people who feel scared right now and outraged, including me. I pray for protection and peace. I know you are always walking beside me and all of your plans are for good and prosperity. I pray that you continue to shine your light on our world and in our country. We need you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Car is broken too. There's only one thing you wanna do. Open your mouth and let it spew. But I am telling you, stay positive. Welcome to Gateway Christian Church in the home and kind of in our building as well. I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got some positive news. Now, as I start off, let me just confess. I, I don't want to sound negative, but honestly, I'm positive that I am really sick and tired of hearing all the negativity that we're going through right now. I mean, personally, I literally do not watch network news. It drives me nuts. I consider that a big time bummer zone. I don't need that. Now, I do want to stay informed. So what I personally do is I read the news, I go online, and I can control the amount of uh, stress that I can get from that, right? Because when you listen to the news broadcasters themselves, it seems like they enjoy weaponizing this crisis. They seem to spew much more propaganda than they are the truth. Politicians are blaming each other one side against the other. I mean, people have died and they're using this for their own agenda, it would seem like. I mean, people have lost jobs, the economy is struggling. We all know that. Our nation is deeply divided. Some people are actually saying it's the end of the world as we know it. And with all this pressure, personally, it's easy to get on edge, isn't it? I mean, it's my birthday today as we're taping this and you're having fun and you're doing stuff, but you kind of get stressed out and maybe your wife says, would you like some more coffee? And you say, no, we can be snippy. Are you with me? You know, now most of the time I've been pretty good. Actually, I've been pretty chilled. But listen, there are those moments where, you know, maybe I've been calling people all day long and listening to their stories and they've lost jobs or they're sick. They've got somebody in the hospital. People are lonely. Listen, it's real personal. Last week, my wife went in for a biopsy and it turns out she actually has basal cell carcinoma cancer. If you're going to get a skin cancer, that's probably the one to get, but it's been there for quite a while and it's a stress out. And you just finally get to us like, why are we going through this? Because listen, we all know we're going through a pandemic of a disease. But at the same time, you may not realize it, but you're living through a pandemic of emotions, a dis-ease. We have a physical disease, the Corona-19, you know, coronavirus. Or we also have an emotional dis-ease that all of us are struggling through. We need some help. Now, 
as believers, as followers of Christ, we're supposed to be good citizens. We're supposed to be an example. So aren't we doing all we can to be safe? We're washing our hands. We're practicing social distancing, staying those six feet away, even when other people are invading our space. You know, whoa, you know, we're, we're trying to do the best we can. We're wearing a mask. We're doing all of these things. But listen, we also, at the very same time that we fight this physical disease, we have to be fighting the spiritual fight of faith. We need to stay positive. Your family needs you to be positive. Your friends need you, need you to be positive. The people you work with or hopefully will work with again, your neighbors, we need to stay positive. Let me just give you something to chew about. Think about this. A negative outlook never leads to a positive life. Never. Now, in this series, I want to help us stay positive in some of the most trying times that anybody's ever lived through. I want to give you some scripture. I want to give you some tools, some weapons that you can use in this fight of faith so that you can win over this pandemic of fear and dis-ease. Now, with all the noise that's going on, let's remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away everything we see and hear but my words will last forever. So for me, I always want to go to Scripture because that is the truth that has been tested and will stand the test of time. I believe God's Word, the Word of God, supersedes the noise of the world. And so here's one of, the, my, one of my go-to verses. Psalm chapter 27 says this, I would have lost heart unless I have believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I love that. David wrote, I, I would have lost heart. I would have kind of given up unless I had believed. you got to have faith. It is so important. What are you believing? That I would see the goodness of the Lord. Man, this is what he's saying. Enough of the bad news. Let's focus on the good news. Let's be optimistic. I would have lost heart unless I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord. Good things are on the way. The psalmist is being optimistic. That's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. Let's, let's, let's focus on the good. Let me tell you about optimism. Optimism is not a denial of reality. Optimism is not blind faith. Optimism is the confidence about the future that we're going to have a successful outcome. Optimism is the unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good. God's got this. Let's go to that verse again we talked about the last two weeks. We might talk about this every week for a while. You can't talk about Romans 8 to 28 right now. It's not, you can't talk about that too much. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Comes back to faith. Paul said, and we know. See, do you believe that? Faith is believing that right now. You know, you believe, you're standing and you're using your faith. You're believing that God is causing everything to work together for good. Even before we hear the all clear trumpet, God is doing it. You got to believe that. Deliverance is on the way. In fact, even though we're in this really negative situation, what you need to understand is that even a negative situation, it still holds the potential to produce a positive purpose. Remember the story of Joseph. He was betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery, looked really bad, went to prison, all this stuff. Guess what? God used that for good. Joseph saved his family and whole nations of people. Even in a negative situation, there could be the potential for a great positive result. And just look at God's track record. It's right in the Bible. There's story after story after story. Think about it. In fact, I want you to think with me right now. Think about what you think about. How do you see the future? Are your thoughts concerned, consumed with negative and the worry and fears and anxiety? Maybe you're addicted to the bad news you see on network television. Oh my goodness. God deliver us, right? 
It's important to understand that whatever consumes your mind consumes your life. The life you have right now is really a reflection of the thoughts that you think. Now, everybody's been self-sheltered, but some people are, are really thriving at home and others are not. I know, I've been calling people. Listen, what's in your mind, what's in your heart, it affects how you feel. And you don't want to just go on feelings, I know that, you, but your faith has to be strong so you can lead your feelings in a good way. The way you're thinking about this crisis is directly affecting the way you feel about the crisis. I'm going to say that again. The way you're thinking about this crisis is directly affecting the way that you feel about the crisis. The quality of your life is never going to exceed the quality of your thoughts. Now, this is really important. Remember that old, uh, that old saying, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out? See, if you fill your mind with negative thoughts, it's going to drag you down. You're going to drown, okay? You got to watch out, man. In fact, if you go down, if your negative thoughts drag you down and you feel like you're drowning, you're probably going to drown other people as well. Now, this can be practical. I mean, I was a Boy Scout, and one of the merit badges what I, that I got when I was a Boy Scout was for life-saving. It's, it's an interesting thing about saving somebody who's drowning. When you swim out to save somebody who thinks that they're about to die, they're actually very dangerous. You go out there to save their lives, but many times the person that gets to that person who's drowning gets drowned themselves because that person is so panicked, they're not thinking good, they climb on top of the other of the person who went to rescue them and they both drown. You don't want that. So as a lifeguard, what they taught us was, you've got to know what you're going up against even when you go out there with the best of intentions. There's some, some things you need to do and there's some things you don't need to do. Now listen, this applies to the way that you think right now about the stuff that you're going through. The book of Psalms, God, my goodness, it's got such good advice. In Psalm chapter one, the New King James Version, it says that there's some things you get blessed by not doing that you don't do, and there's other things you get blessed by doing. For instance, in Psalm chapter 1, verse, verse, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Three things. Don't do, don't walk in, don't apply, don't live out the counsel of the ungodly. The counsel of the ungodly tends to be pretty bad, all right? Nor stand in the path of sinners. The way of sinners, sinning itself, is gonna, it's going to affect you in a negative way. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. The third thing about bitterness and critical attitudes and spirits and everything kind of looks bad. Don't do those three things. Three things don't do. Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates, he thinks about the law day and night, all the time. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, does not wither. And I love the last verse, the last part of verse three. Whatever he does shall prosper. That is so cool. I believe that. Whatever you do, if you do the right stuff, you think about God's word and you meditate with God and you walk with God, he is going to give you wisdom and insight on how to do whatever you're doing better. Whatever you do will prosper. Don't think on the negative. Think on the positive. Whatever consumes your mind controls your life. If you're thinking about negative stuff, down you can go. If you're thinking about good stuff, honestly, you know what? You should brainwash yourself with the good, positive promises of God. Promises like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or how about this one? Uh, Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I've been praying that for a lot of people as I've been walking and talking with God. Uh, how about this one? I am more than an overcomer through Christ. There are so many scriptures and promises of God that can keep you afloat. Let me go back to my little illustration about being a lifesaver, a, a lifeguard. 
If you swim out to somebody and they are so panicked that they try to climb on top of you and drown you, what they taught us as lifeguards is they taught us to wrestle those people and maneuver around them so that you could subdue them and tow them to store to, to shore. And one of the techniques that they said that people who are drowning don't like this at all is when they're trying to climb on top of you, what you do is just grab them by the head and push them under. If you take a drowning person and you push their head under, they tend to let go. Now, if, if you're not able to do that, if, if they actually get a hold of you and they're on top of you and, and you're kind of going under, the next thing you can do is when if they're on top of you, just grab them and you just try to pull them under. It's an amazing thing that a drowning person will almost always let go if you try to pull them down deeper. And then what you do, if you've put their head under and they give up or you're underneath them and they give up, you come up behind them, you put their body up on your shoulder and then you tell them, look, it's going to be fine. I got you. I got this. We're going to make it. And then you tow them to shore. I will confess I did enjoy the wrestling part of that. But the point is this, that the positive can overcome the negative. It's a fight. You got to be strong. But listen, we can learn to do this. Don't be a pessimist. Pessimists tend to think negative events as personal and permanent. All right. Some people are so brainwashed to see the negative. They think, you know, if, if something's going on, it's all my fault. I brought this, you know, I'm no good, I'm a failure, I'm unworthy. And they, they think it's so personal. Or they also think it's permanent. Bad things always happen to me. I always strike out. I'm never going to change. Or this virus will always be here. It's never going to change. It's unstoppable. We're going to have to wear masks the rest of our lives. We're never going to get to go to Disneyland again. I'm never going to feel safe. Folks. This too shall pass. Deliverance is on the way. I'm believing that. And that enables me to live like that. I'm not living in fear. I don't have my head stuck in the sand, but I, I got to tell you, I'm believing I'm going to make it through this. I'm believing for you to make it through this. Let's be strong in the faith. Whatever consumes your mind controls your life. Is it going to be fear or is it going to be faith? Listen, I got great advice for you. Consider this. Pray about this. Starve your fears and feed your faith. How about that? Starve your fears and feed your faith. Because whatever you feed grows. Listen to this verse, or some, listen to these verses in Romans chapter 8. Verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 5, for those whose life, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded, to be fleshly minded, carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The Apostle Paul who wrote this knew what he was talking about. He had been whipped and stoned. He'd been shipwrecked. He suffered a lot. And he said in verse 18, I consider that the present suffering that we're going through, and we are, the economy's been tanked, People around it, we know we're suffering, right? I mean, that's true. We're not denying that. But Paul said, the present sufferings that we're going through are not worthy comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Yes, we're suffering. Yes, this is hard. Yes, we hurt. Some hurt more than others, but we're all hurting. Just know this, God is working things out. I get it. Do you? This too shall pass. And just remember this. Here's some more good news. The struggle I'm in today is producing the strength that I need tomorrow. Consider it all joy. God is doing something in you as he's doing all these things around you. 
making you, if you're partnering with him, if you're open for the spirit to work in you, he's making you a better person. Starve your fears, feed your faith. And oh, by the way, the Holy Spirit will help you do that. You don't have to do that by yourself. Romans 8, 26 says, likewise, the spirit also helps us in our weakness. Lord, we need it, help, right? Would you agree with that? Lord, help me. And now we've gotten to verse 28 again. And we know that all things work together for those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So remember this, no matter where I go, God is there. No matter what I do, God still loves me. And no matter what happens to me, God is for me. It says that in verse 31, Romans 8, 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Folks, join me. Let's have an unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good. God is always working his purpose for our good. Faith or fear, what's gonna drive you? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for the promise of your word. Thank you that even though we've been going through this, we never would have picked to go through this, chosen to go through this. But Father, we've been going through this for a couple of months now. We want it to be over, but we're still in it. And God, we're praying that you would help us stay positive. If we've got a negative emotion pulling us down, God, help us to overcome that. May our faith overcome our fears. Is that you? Friend, are you fighting fears right now and anxieties? Are you wondering if this really is ever gonna pass? If that's you, just lift your hand, lift your heart, lift your voice up to the Lord right now. Maybe as you're listening to this, you wanna text this, put that on the screen right now. You're praying, you're believing, God help me to overcome my fears by staying positive and believing you're doing your thing because faith can overcome Friend, if you've never said yes to Jesus, I don't want to stop before giving you an opportunity to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Help, I don't, I, I've lost this battle on my own and I ask you to come in and forgive me of my sins and help partner with me so that I can learn to be an overcomer. Friend, if that's you, maybe you can put that on the screen or you can, you can uh, put our communication card afterwards online. You can fill out a communication card so we can know and we can be praying for you. Lord, may the decisions that we, we make right now, may they honor you and may they bless us with a sense of your peace and may our faith overcome all of our fears. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, Stay positive. Thanks again for joining us this weekend for Church at Home. If you're interested in joining one of our virtual small groups or taking the next step, let us know at gatewaycc.org slash card. I just wanted to say thank you so much for partnering with us at Gateway. Your generosity is able to make such a huge impact in our community. If you want to learn more about partnering with us through giving, you can do so at gatewaycc.org slash give. Church is not just four walls. Go ahead and share the link to someone you feel could benefit from today's message. And be sure to check out our Facebook page often for updates as we navigate our reopening. Have a great week. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you're enjoying church at home today. And yes, I'm still holding on here myself. Uh, I may or may not be cutting it soon. We don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I want to share with you this morning. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to share with the youth group via Zoom about the subject of trust. The subject came from the Uversion Bible plan, Quarantine Youth Exile. The plan was centered around Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
and the challenges they faced while dwelling in the land of Babylon. We started with a definition of trust, which is a firm belief in the integrity, ability, or character of a person or thing, confidence or reliance. Daniel and his friends had to put their trust in God while literally in exile from their homeland. Their trust in God put them in a position for God to help them. God gave them much favor. Now we tied this back to the current situation of being under quarantine. Some of those things we noted were that we're all dealing with this at different levels, but remember that God will give you the favor to get through this. Also trust God to help you with the anxiety that will come from time to time. And then pay attention to what you're learning. He'll use that to help you thrive now and be even better or stronger in the future. I want you to take just a quick moment to think of someone or something that you trust in your life. I remember having to do what's called a trust fall at a youth camp called Bridge Builders back in Memphis uh, growing up. And it was a very, very interesting experience. So there are two versions of this that we did. Uh, one was a single person where you literally uh, you stood in front of a buddy and you would not be looking at them and you would literally just fall back and they would catch you. There was another version, which was more like a team version where uh, you had uh, lots of teammates that would stand in a, in a line facing each other and their arms would be uh, sort of overlapping each other in between each other. And there was also an added uh, part to this as well. There was a person that would be underneath those uh, folks that are extending their arms. And then you would go up to a certain height, not too, too high, but a certain height. And again, you would fall back and uh, trust that your team would uh, would catch you. And there were two elements to this. So there's you up high falling back. And then there's a person underneath as well that uh, was trusting that you would be strong enough to, uh, the team would be strong enough to not uh, let the person fall and go through. But um, anyway, it's nice to have someone that you can trust in your life, but you can't trust them with your salvation. Christ made the sacrifice on the cross for all of us. Trust him with your soul. If or when you fall, he'll help you get back up. And you know, it's the best decision you'll ever make. Thank you so much. Let us take this moment to remember the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross for us, and then we'll partake of the communion. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to take this communion today and let this be a blessing to our soul. Let us help, let us remember the sacrifice uh, that you made on the cross today. Thank you, Lord. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Please take of the bread. And after the same manner, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Please partake. Father, again, we thank you so much. We thank you so much that we were able to put our trust in you, our trust of our souls, our salvation, uh, all in you, God. And we thank you for giving us peace through this particular storm that we're going through and help those, God, that are still looking for their peace, uh, the purpose of all this, uh, help them, God, to find that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.